We're here at the uh, Devolver Trailer Park at E3 2016 and as you can see I'm sort of like orientally themed somewhat. Yes, I've been playing Shadow Warrior 2 inside the trailer here and, and I gotta say it's a pretty amazing game. It's, it's a lot to take in because there's, this game offers so much out of the gate. There's, there's many things that you need to consider. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, a, it's an FPS in kind of an old school type, so it's gameplay oriented. We don't have regenerating health. We have like health packs that you have to pick up or you have to heal yourself. Uh, but it's also really, really complex. We have a lot of mechanics, a lot of different systems that you can uh, use. You actually been playing uh, fully developed characters, so it was a little bit overwhelming because you had so many options to, to consider and so many weapons. There are over 70 weapons in the game with an upgrade system, so you can basically multiply them in really, really large numbers. Uh, but it's still an uh, old school gameplay driven, hardcore F FPS. One of those things you say old school and all of that and all that, but I, I love how things change, change together. Like you can double jump, you can dash, but you also have different weapons so you can use them in different directions. Different direction also means different sort of attacks. Uh, with the sword you got, you got, the thing is like you're not locked into melee if you take the sword for instance. And that, I think that's beautiful because then you can sort of you can move around the battlefield and take advantage of all the movement that's available. That was one of the, the key features that we wanted to kind of tap into. It's, we have this really cool melee system and you can slice in eight different directions. That combined with our procedural cutting system uh, basically makes the, the fights really, really unique and you can slice and dice the enemies like as you see fit. So you can basically slice one limb off and then uh, expect that the key will actually change, the enemy will change the, the, tactics, the tactics that that he uses. So if he holds the, a sword and you chop off his limb, he'll try to use the second limb. Uh, and also, well, we have one more really cool weapon that we are showcasing at D3, which is the chainsaw. Yeah. And actually the chainsaw allows you to Oh my God, to, 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 to do serious amounts of gore, like serious amounts of, of gore. You can combine it with spells from it. Loan can use some, some really neat spells like uh, Chi Blast, which is basically like a force push, and uh, something called Grasp of Darkness, which is a kind of a spiky attack that you spike your enemies. So what you do, you spike your enemies, you approach them with the, with the chainsaw, you start to grind them with the chainsaw, and then you use the, the Chi Blast, and you have like a fountain of chunks falling from the sky. So, in, in some games you have like pre-cooked animations. What we wanted to do is for you to create your own kind of finishers, to have fun with the, with the, with the gore system that we have, with the, the cutting system that, that we have. So yeah, we went in that direction. And, and speaking of that, I mean, something that enhances just about everything about the game is the four-player co-op that you're adding in there. Because not only are you doing this yourself, but you're, you're your, your, their other wangs are also contributing to the carnage, which is quite a show to behold. I mean, sometimes I was just pulling back to see what the others were doing to sort of get the foot. Because when you're in there and the blood is everywhere, sometimes you don't even you don't, see don't all see the things happening. happening. Uh, that's true, that's true. Well, it's a four player drop in, drop out co op, so you can basically join up whenever you want. Uh, the host will always drive the game, so, but you will see yourself as low wang. So uh, when there is an animation, you will participate in the animation as the Loang. So you'll take like you will have the full story experience, uh, and you will see other players as what we call cop ninjas. So uh, there is an element of customization to it. So you can basically customize your looks, uh, pick a different skin, uh, pick a different uh, color scheme for the for the skin, color scheme for the skin. That's crazy. Uh, so yeah, that's all about having fun with friends. It's not yet finalized, so we are going to add some more features to it. We want to add some specific co cooperative features like, you know, dragging the aggro from the, from the enemy so you can kind of help your friends. We want to add some kind of a healing method. Uh, we are not sure yet if it, that will be a special gun or maybe that will be a special upgrade for the guns that you can basically shoot your friends and you'll, you'll, you'll heal them. I, was, I wanted to talk about uh, narrative in, in the context of co-op and, and all the things that you're adding to add replayability and, and sort of the procedural nature of it. How does that marry with sort of trying to, to tell a narrative and does that present any challenge? Uh, the narrative actually is pretty much the same for every single player, so you'll just participate in the story. Uh, there is you have to sort of hold back a little bit on that because of the nature of co-op or no, 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 because every player sees himself as Loang, 
we don't have to compromise. You will take part in the story exactly like everybody. So it's a, pretty much the same experience when you play single player and when you play uh, cooperatively. Uh, the thing that uh, is kind of unique in this game, and it's not entirely co connected to the story, is the whole you know randomization of levels. You already mentioned the procedural si systems. We have procedural cutting, and the levels are constructed in a way that they are basically randomized. So each time when you load into a level, it's taken from a pool of levels, and it looks slightly different. So when you finish a game from the from the very beginning to the end, like just go through the single player and when you restart you can expect a slightly different experience with different levels, with different placement of enemies, different placement of objectives. But it all kind of clicks in together because again you see yourself as low rank no matter if you play alone or, or, or with your friends. This is the second straight E3 that I'm seeing Shadow Warrior 2. It's certainly progressed a lot since last time around. But how, how, how far do you have to go and sort of you you're coming out on console as well. Where, where, where is the project at right now? We are closing it up. There is still some work to be done. I can't tell you exactly how much work there is to be done, but we are going to release this game <laughs> this year, second half. Not entirely sure if that will be as what Nigel Lowry said recently, September. We'll see, hopefully, maybe. We don't know yet. It's not yet finalized. This is why we didn't actually uh, publish any, any, any release date. But be sure that it, it is coming this year. Sounds good. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.